Welcome to Light of Grace Ministry International, where we unveil Jesus to uncover the truth through the gospel of Christ to all nations of the world by the Spirit of God. As God's words come your way today through God's servant, Pastor Bernard Benjamin. Please listen and be blessed. A moment to be in the house of God. David said, I was glad when he said, Let us go to the house of God. If you have your Bible, let's turn this moment to the word of God in Ecclesiastic chapter 9, the book of Ecclesiastic chapter 9, and we're going to be taking just a verse from that scripture of Ecclesiastic chapter 9, and we'll be reading verse 11. The writer said, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the sweet, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, because the entrance of your word gives light, give it understanding to the simple. Precious fathers, we behold your word, cause us to see beyond the letters and see all that you have said concerning us as we receive the engrafted word of God. Let the word of God do us good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's such a wonderful moment to be in the house of God. And I'll be sharing with us today what I title, Not by Chance, but on Purpose. Not by Chance, but on Purpose. Behind every blessing that you experience, or behind those blessings that drop on your life as a child of God, is deliberately on purpose. Those blessings that we see in our life, they are intentional. We don't experience any blessing from God if it was not on the primates of God's purpose to bring forth what He has planned for us. That's to say, no blessing on the life of a child of God is accidental. No blessing that you experience as a child of God is a mistake from God. They were pre-planned by God to bless your life. So they are deliberate. The blessing that you see in your life are pre-planned by God. You are too special as a child of God. You were created anew by the blood of the Lamb for things to happen to by chance. You are too special in the hands of God for things to just happen to ordinary. You are not an object or a product of chance. You are the masterpiece of God. Being born again brought you and I into the class of God where God treats us like his beloved that we are. So you are not an object of chance but of divine purpose, divinely orchestrated by God in order for the blessing to rub on you. The proof that you are a child of God is God's blessing on your life. A woman called Ruth in the Ruth chapter 2 verse beginning from verse 15. Ruth chapter 2 beginning from verse 15. God's word tells us about this woman, how she has left her people because she, she ate from Moab, but she followed Naomi, her mother Hilo, back to Bethlehem. And when she was raised up to glean, she has accepted Israel to be our land and the God of Israel. And then she started working. She started looking for something to do. And the Bible said that when she was raising to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheep and reproach her not. And in the next verse, something happened. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. Let the things that she is in need of, let it come to her deliberately and leave them that she may glean them and be her not. The blessing that she received was on purpose. The owner of the field, born Boaz, told his employee, please leave a handful of all that this woman will go to pick from the field. Do it deliberately. So Ruth saw plenty grey in the field and she picked them up. It is not as a debtor. It was prearranged by the owner of the field. So many times there are some blessings that come your way. You think you just happen to fall into them by accident. No. It was orchestrated by God. Ruth went to pick up these things from the field, not knowing that it was said that the souls should be left for her. What she did not know was that the owner of the field, Boaz, had already commanded his men to let the grain for her because she had found favor in the sight of the man. The picture of what we saw in Ruth chapter 2 is a picture of Jesus Christ and us. Boaz 
is a picture of the heavenly Jesus is a picture of us and uh, purposely commands the, his blessings to fall on your life most times you think it is the mock prayers you prayed and made those blessings come your way most times you think because you fasted so much that's the reason why God came through for you no he had proposed to bless you God had proposed to bless you not that you fasted so much that's the reason why God blessed you the way he blessed you the day you gave your heart to Jesus you became candidate for the blessings of God and now you see those blessings upon your life it is because God had purposely commanded those blessings to come on your life the word of God speaking to us in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 8 Deuteronomy 28 and verse 8 God talking about the blessing that will release upon our lives the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settest thy hand unto and shall bless thee in the land with the Lord that God has given unto thee. If you are not in this land, that is the reason why you are blessed. You are not in other parts of the world, that's the reason why you are blessed. You are blessed because God has commanded Psalms chapter 84 and verse 11. The psalm was also speaking. He said in that verse of Psalms chapter 84 and verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God is a son that provides and takes care of his own. And no good thing will he withhold. And because God is the son of the shield, that's why he has blessed us with his blessings. The word of God said the blessing of the Lord makes sweet and add no sorrow to it. So God purposely had planned to bless you. Not because you labored so much for it, that's the reason why you are blessed. It's not because you are smarter than others, that's why you have been blessed because God purposely decide to bless you. Psalm chapter 133 and verse 3, the David also was also speaking concerning the blessing of God upon our lives. He said, as the dew of Hanau and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. But there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Even God had commanded the blessing. So you see the blessing on your life is on a purpose. The blessing of God on your life is for a reason. The favor you enjoy is for a reason. Somebody said I've been so blessed because I work so hard. I've been so blessed because I work 24 hours in a day. You are not blessed because you are, you've been working hard. You are blessed because you've been marked to be blessed. It is the favor of God for you to be blessed. That favor on your life is on a purpose is because God deliberately drop those blessings in your life like we read from Ruth chapter 2 the owner of the field told this man please drop these blessings on purpose let these blessings be in the life of this woman what i'm saying god has given angels charge to cause his blessings to drop on your life when you go out and you receive favor in form of protection it's god giving angels charge to protect you when you return from a very exhausting trip it's God that has made you not to be worn out because God always ensure the best for you as it's just. Psalm 103 and verse 20 he said oh he is angels that is said his strength that hearken to the voice of God doing his commandment or giving hearkening to the voice of his word God has given the angels charge over you what are they doing in your life to bring the blessings of God upon your life so many went the same way you went and some of them couldn't return so many traveled and they couldn't return but you went on a journey and you came back. It's because God gave his angels child about you. These are blessings that sometimes we fail to recognize. Hebrews 1 and verse 14. He said, I think no ministry spirit who has been assigned to minister to the saints for who are the heirs of salvation. God has given his angels charge to minister to your needs. So those blessings on your life, they are not by chance. Those favors on your life, they are not by chance. They didn't just occur, they occurred because they were deliberate. It was intentional by God to bless your life. So there are no blessings that find its way into your life today as a believer that are not on the account of God's purpose. Every blessing you receive today as a child of God, they are on the account of God's purpose to bless you. So that's why as a child of God, you must understand the importance of the favor of God on your life, fathers. The blessing of the Lord about to make sweet and have no sorrow to it. Every good thing that happens to you is on purpose. Everything that happens to you, the favor of God has enlisted you to be favored. James 1 verse 17, he said, Every good and perfect gift come from above, come from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good thing that happens to you is 
deliberate because you have found favor in the sight of God. Check from the scriptures. Everyone who found favor in the sight of God, it did not happen by chance. It all happened because of God's favor. God chose to favor them. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. The Bible said, And Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 3. Abraham had favor with God. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 12. Moses was talking to God, if I had found favor in thy sight, let your presence go with me. Everyone who enjoyed the favor of God was on the Luke chapter 1 and verse 28. An angel appeared unto Mary and said, Mary, thou art highly favored of God. Blessed among women, thou art highly favored of God. So God chose to favor you and I, not because we did so much, it's because he gave Christ to us. So God's favor on an individual is purpose oriented. The blessing of God on your life is purpose oriented. And that's why understanding his purpose is the pathway to keep experiencing God's favor. Understanding the purpose of God is the pathway to keep experiencing God's favor. We must understand God's purpose for our life. And if you understand God's purpose, it helps you to fit in into God's plan and purpose for your life. Because the day you understand, the purpose of God for your life, it causes you to be enriched with the Romans chapter 9 and verse 15. God was talking through Moses. He said, I will have mercy. I will show compassion on those whom I have chosen to do so. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And in the next verse, so then it is not of him that will it. In this kingdom, strength is not equal to favor. In this kingdom, physical ability is not equal to grace. So then, it is not of him that will it, not of him that run it. Smart people are not candidates for favor. Smart people, because smartness could mean that depending on one's efforts, that's why I said, not of him, it's not of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. God shows mercy to you. That's what makes you who you become. I love another translation of this verse. He says, the most intelligent people are not entitled to the blessings of God. Because what they attain causes them to feel what is happening is their making. But God says, it is not of him that will it, not of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Nothing happens by chance. Everything you see happening to you as a believer, we are preordained by God. Is on purpose. So the Lord know how to place you at the right place and at the right time. Oh, I just got a job because I was at the right place at the right time. No, it is God orchestrating your steps to be in the right place at the right time. Psalm 37, verse 23. The step of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. Because the Lord knows how to make you to be in the right place at the right time for that favor that you need. Just as he placed Ruth in the right place at the right time. We read from Ruth chapter 2 how Ruth was in the right place at the right time for the favor she needed. She was in the right place at the right time and she was favored greatly. And because of those things that happened to her, she became the grandmother of Jesus Christ. So nothing happened by chance. Everything you see happen to a believer is pre-planned. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. But those he foreknew, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Nothing happened to a believer by chance. Somebody said I was lucky. That's why I am where I am today. No, we don't believe in luck. We are children of the most high God. Who believe so much in favor and the blessing of God on our lives. So why did God position Ruth in such a way? Why did God position Ruth in such a way? Because she trusted in the Lord's ability. Even when it appeared as it not gonna, it won't go, it won't gonna come, come, come to pass. Even when it appears as nothing of such will come to pass. But God positioned her because she trusted in the Lord. Trust for God is what triggers the favor of God upon a man. I don't know how God will do it, but I trust Him to take me there. I don't know how God will change things, but I trust Him to turn things around. Trust beckons on favor to speak on your life. She trusted God when she told Naomi, "Your God will be my God." Your people will be my people. From that moment, she enlisted herself as candidate for the favor of God. No wonder Romans 8 and verse 29, 28 says, tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God. Who had been called according to his purpose? Everything works together for good. When you trust God, everything works for your good. When you learn to believe in God's word, everything works for your good. Esther was not the most beautiful girl in the realm. She was not the most beautiful girl, but something happened that made her to be enlisted as the queen in the land. 
it was favor. Because prior to that time, God had already proposed to make Esther a name in the land. Esther chapter 2. And the Bible said, the king said, where she saw Esther. Not because she decorated herself so much with all the beauties, all the beautiful things. It was the favor of God that was on her life that made her to be singled out. Esther chapter 2 and verse 17. The king looked at her and said, this is something else. Favor speaks louder than words. The king loved Esther more than all the entire women. She obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. She was not the most beautiful among the virgins, but there was something that was beckoning for her to be enlisted as the queen. What happened so? She, he sat the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashi. Favor will cause a man who is not known for anything to become someone to be reckoned with. After the order of Joseph, Joseph was nobody. But when Favor was speaking for him, he became the second in command. It is not by chance, it is on purpose. When purpose finds expression in your life, there's nothing anybody can do about it. There's nothing anybody can do about it. So let it to depend on Jesus. For right happiness is the key that unlocks all of God's blessings in your direction. We must learn to depend on Jesus for the right happiness in our life. God has given us brain. God has given us heart to do things, but He won't also depend on Him. You know what to do, but you're still saying, Lord, I depend on you. It's the greatest act of humility before God. My Father and the Lord said, there's nothing He embarks on without us asking and checking, over checking with God. Probably God said it the first time. If in the second time, God is not saying the same thing, He backs out. Because when you have favor with God, it doesn't matter who is out there to, to make that word not to come to pass. Learning to depend on Jesus for right happiness is the key that unlocks all of God's blessings in your direction. It is beyond your ability to get things through careful planning and strategizing. Thank God for the ability to plan. Thank God for the ability to strategize. There's nothing wrong about planning. There's nothing wrong about strategizing. The Bible said, as a matter of truth, Proverbs 19 and verse 21, it said, many are the device of a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. There's nothing wrong about planning. As a matter of fact, a wise man said, planning, not planning, is planning to fail. To an extent, it could be true. But what happens when the plan fails? Don't get yourself stressed out and uptight when things doesn't go as you have planned. When things doesn't go the way you planned, what happens to you? Then you failed? No. So the best way out of it is to position yourself by trusting God for his favor to run on you. Don't get so sticked to your plan and forget to make room for God's favor to flow in your direction. A lot of times we get so carried away with our plans which are good, but sometimes we make the mistake not including God in our plans or not making room for God. We plan all the things and we leave God out of it. He said, no, this is, the, what, this is what I will do at this point in time. And God is looking at you. What happens to you when you get to a point where you need the favor of God to break through? We should always make room for God's favor to flow, to protect and position us. <coughs> Always as believers, plan your plan, but make the greatest room for God's favor. Can I repeat that again? Plan your plan, but make the greatest room for God's favor on your life. Because when God's favor is attracted, arise your plan. Somebody was supposed to be in an hotel for the anniversary, the wedding anniversary. At that time, they, were, they planned to be in that hotel in Marriott in Malaysia. Something happened that they couldn't meet up with their flight at that time. And both of them were complaining. We we'll missed our flight. What will happen? And in process of trying to get another flight to get to, you know, to their destination, they discovered that the flight that they supposed to have boarded crashed, and eventually every person in that plane died. What appeared to be a kind of a frustrating, you know, issue became God stepping on board to deliver them from that plane crash. Plan your plan, but make the greatest room for God's favor on your life. Because God's favor has gone ahead of you as a child of God. When we're talking about favor, we're not talking about just receiving things. No, we're talking about the protection of God. We're talking about the hand of God. Favor is not just in material things. Favor is God's presence in your life. Favor is God manifesting himself in your life. Carrying the grace of God, the glory of God in every situation. So what I'm saying, position yourself for God's favor to roar and flow in your life as a child of God. Before Abraham died, Abraham called his servant in Genesis chapter 24 and said to the servant, Please, I want you to get a bride for my son Isaac. Genesis chapter 24, he told the servant, Promise that you'll get a bride for my son Isaac. And the servant said yes, and he gave him all that he needed to, for that purpose. And the servant went on, I love to read verse 5 of it, Genesis 24 and verse 5. <coughs> Excuse me. And the servant said to him, Be 
Perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? He went on like that. It was a difficult task before the servant. But Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. I just want to skip that and go to the next verse. I want to read verse 10 now. And the man, you know, began his journey. Then the servant took 10 of his master's cameras and departed for, for all his master's goods were in his hands. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nam. And when he was there, he came to the city and saw a beautiful woman, a lot of choice to make. And in verse 12, he prayed the prayer to God. Then he said, Oh God, O oh Lord of my father, master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. This is the favor of God, the blessing of God speaking in the life of this man. Show me, he said, kindness. I will know what to do. By my calculation, it is difficult for me to handle. <coughs> but I need the favor of God to simplify all of this. And the Bible said, if you read further in verse 14 now, let's read verse 30, sorry. Verse 13, he said, Behold, here I stand by the way of water. This was what he said to God. And the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. And verse 14 now, something happened. Now, let he be the, the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And say, she says, Drink, and I will also give your comments a drink. That was his prayer. Don't forget it all. Lord, show me kindness. And this was the result of his prayer. And what happened? Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Simple prayer. It is not by chance. It is on purpose. Everything that happens to you that are good, it is because God is sure to favor you. And the Bible said, if you read further, and it happened before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah, who was born Bethu, son of Micah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with a picture on her shoulder, and something happened in the next verse, fulfilling what the young man had prayed for. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her, and she went down to the well, filled a pitcher, and came up. Favor went before the servant of God. And what happened? That was how God favored the servant of Abraham on the quest of his master to get a bride for his son. What I'm saying, with the eyes of faith, seek doors of opportunities be open to you. You must learn to step out in faith. You must learn to step out in faith as a child of God, as a consign the blessing that you want to receive from God. Don't make your life a product of chance. No, if they will favor me. No, if they will, they will call me. If they will, no, you are a product of favor, not a product of chance. So as a child of God, with the eyes of faith, see doors being open to you. See things turning around in your favor. Before you go out, prepare and equip yourself and go forth and pick the things that God has already aligned for you on the path of your success. But it begins with having faith in God. It begins with having trust for God. No matter what it is, God is able to bring to pass in your life what he had proposed for you as his child. What I'm saying therefore, don't leave your life to chance. Believe on the blessings of God because it's greater than chance. Be on your feet. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you because your favor is of my my life is not an object of chance. My life is not a product of chance, but my life is a product of your grace.